the whole month of December, we are looking at the Christmas good news. And today, we are told that good news is being brought to a young unmarried girl called Mary. She lives in Nazareth, a small town near the Sea of Galilee in Israel, some 2,000 years ago. So let us follow the narrative of Dr. Luke and find out what this good news is all about. Or, is that good news? So that's, uh, that's what we are going to look at. Well, is this good news for Mary? And then we also like to follow up and see from Mary's reaction and her response to this good news. Yes, this good news is about Jesus. So what is so special about Jesus? So we will learn next and then ask the same or important question. Is Jesus worth believing in? This is a good question many people like to ask. Well, what is so special about Jesus? So let's consider this in our consideration this morning. Well, firstly, is this good news? Now, in the narrative given by Luke, that the angel Gabriel was sent by God to Nazareth and uh, to, to the home of this young and married virgin, Mary, who was betrothed to Joseph. Now, I wonder whether we have been visited by angels. To me, I think, what a rare and a privilege uh, to be visited by an angelic being. And notice the greeting of the angel came in two parts. In verse 28, the angel said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. Meaning, the Lord's favour is on you. Now, would you like to be looked upon by God in favour? Must be great, isn't it? In the eyes of God, we are precious that he's going to show his favour to us. And then, secondly, the Lord is with her. Now, not only he is, she is looked upon favourably by God, God is going to be with her. Now, this being with God is something to be envied. Just imagine if you are walking down the city centre with the Queen next to you, or if you are invited by the Queen to go in her carriage, what a wonderful privilege to be with someone of such dignity. But you have here God, the you know, King of Kings, to be with Mary. What a wonderful privilege and experience. And so that must be good news, isn't it? In God's book, as well as being with God. But in verse 29, we read on, Mary was a bit puzzled, and she was going through in her mind. What does it mean? And she is greatly troubled at such greetings. Now, I think it shows that, you know, Mary is not a shallow person. And uh, she likes to reflect on the significance of such an event. Now, so is this good news? In verse 30, we learned the angel said, do not be afraid. Perhaps the angel Gabriel could see from Mary's facial expression that she was a bit troubled. So she comf he comforted her 
well, I use the word he, I mean, angel is neither he or she. So the angel comforted her with such word, do not be afraid. You have found favour with God. For the second time, he assured her of this. And then, I don't think Mary was prepared for the next uh, statement. You will conceive and give birth to a son. Now, to, mar to many married women, especially for those who like children, this sounds good news. Because oh, the same thing was brought to Elizabeth, who was known as the Baron. And uh, so being pregnant and to have a child is good news to many people. But Mary wasn't too sure. Why? Well, before we read on, and we just skip a bit further, in verse 34, Mary's response to this news of pregnancy was somewhat, you know, confused. I would like to use the word. She asked, how can this be? Since I have no relationship with a man. Now, we were told earlier on that Mary was unmarried, though she was engaged to be married. Now, the word in the olden version, uh, in the Bible, it says betrothed. Now, at the ancient time, to be betrothed is much more than just engagement. Nowadays, engagement seems to be a very simple uh, um, decision or action taken by some pretty, you know, pretty easily. And uh, sometimes they, yeah, they spend time and make sure it is romantic, and, uh, but yet uh, sometimes engagement do break up. But in the olden days, to be betrothed means that they are locked in in a marriage contract. In, in all purposes, the society would regard them as man and wife. To their family, they are husband and wives, even though they have not had the wedding, they have not moved in and lived together and live as man and wife. But for all intents and purposes, they are as a married couple. So Mary's question was the most logical and rational question, rather than a question of unbelief. She's saying, look, how can it be? You know, how can I be pregnant before having a relationship with my husband? So the angel Gabriel told her plainly that this pregnancy is not a result of human conception. It doesn't mean that she is going to be conceived after her wedding with Joseph. For he says very clearly, you will conceive and give birth to a son. And in verse 35, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Now let us unpack this. The angel Gabriel makes it very plain that this child, Jesus, is born of God, is of divine conception, is 100% divine and holy. So the baby to be carried in the womb of Virgin Mary is 100% human, but yet without sin. This Jesus is the Son of God, Right? So the Holy One to be born, unlike us human, born in sin. We have the sinful inclination. We have the sinful nature in us, but not so with Jesus. Not only He is the Son of God, He's the Holy One. Last week, we were reminded that the Word became flesh. 
God becoming human being. So the Holy One take on the form of a human person born as a baby, and now the conception is described as the the, the power of God over you know overshadowing Mary, and this conception, this virgin conception, is unique, unlike human conception. And uh, the angel Gabriel mentioned another pregnancy was nothing short of a miracle. For in verse 37, the angel said, Look, your cousin Elizabeth, who was barren and advanced in years, she was or she is carrying a miracle baby for six months. So, miracle is nothing in the eyes of God, because nothing is impossible with God. Oh, I didn't have it here. Oh, anyway, in verse 37, in your NIV, it says, For nothing is impossible with God. And uh, in ESV, it simply says, Nothing is impossible for God. Now, I don't think Mary needs any convincing because in her response she replied by saying look I am the Lord's maid may your word to me be fulfilled now I think for Mary she must be thinking you know well that's my Boggling. I'm unmarried and yet I'm going to be conceived and uh, to, to be pregnant and it's totally sort of beyond my understanding. Well, the Bible actually reminds us that our understanding is limited. For it says in Isaiah 55 verse 9, As the heavens are higher than the earth, God said, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Now, I don't know whether Mary was thinking of such verse, but hearing this good news from the angel Gabriel, she asked no more questions. She needs no more answers. She simply responds by saying, yes, it is possible, because God can work miracles and I am just a Lord's servant maid now I like her response even though it was so simple by saying that I am just a handmaid she is acknowledging that she is nothing other than a servant even though she was highly favored by God in many people, she has the highest honour to be given to any person ever lived, being the mother of Jesus. Now, who has the privilege to bear the Son of God in her womb? To the Roman Catholic, they regard her as the mother of God. Right? And, uh, but, you know, no matter what people think she is, she thinks, I'm only a handmaid. I'm only a servant. I'm only serving God's purpose. I think that is really wonderful. Many people may say that they are servants of God and yet behave like masters of God's people. Instead of taking a lowly position to serve, many servants of God behave like they are the one who has the, um, the control of God's people in their hand and they are masters. I think that is uh, something that we need to uh, be reminded of. When we are serving God, we are just simply servants of God for His people.
Now Mary understands it. True servanthood is to God is to serve God's purpose and act according to God's instructions. So she said, I'm only a handmaid. And secondly, she said, May your word to me be fulfilled. Now that is a sign of trust and submission. By saying that, she is, she is saying, I'm prepared to bear this child, even though I'm not married. But what is the big deal? Now nowadays, there are many unmarried mothers, there are many pregnancy uh, took place before the wedding, and uh, at one time, uh, it wasn't to be accepted, even less so in the days of Jesus, because it means extremely difficult and morally dangerous for Mary to stand and live in a community at, <clears throat> when she is unmarried and yet pregnant. Firstly, how is she going to face her future with Joseph, one who is betrothed to her? Is he going to accept her? Would he believe her account? And what if not? Now, if she is going to be, uh, as it were, divorced, now, which there is a great possibility to do so, and we will read on next week what happened when Joseph learned of this news. But think of the cost involved. The shame, the rejection by the engaged husband, and also the shame and the rejection from the community. Not only that, how is she going to survive without the support of a husband with a young child? There's no social security. There is no one to lean on but herself looking after and bringing up a child on her own. Now the implication is vast. The cost is great. But yet she said, let it be so. I'm willing to take this up at all costs. And I think that is tremendous. I wonder how many of us are prepared to say so. Lord, I'm willing to, to, to pay the cost for being your servant, for obedient to your instructions. And let's come to the center of the story, Jesus himself. I mean, as wonderful as uh, Mary's reaction and response is, Christmas is about the birth of Jesus. So how did the angel Gabriel describe this Jesus? In verse 32, this Jesus will be great. Firstly, he will be great. Secondly, he will be called the Son of the Most High. Thirdly, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father. Throne. Fourthly, his reign over Jacob's descendants, that is Israel, the Jews. So he is going to be king of Jews, not only for a limited period, but forever. Now, no earthly king can claim their, 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 their reign would last forever, even though they might like to do so. I think the longest serving uh, monarch in England was the Queen Victoria, wasn't it? Where is she now? Okay. And then fifthly, his kingdom will never end. Now, not only never ending in terms of time, 
His kingdom actually spreads across boundary, across space. He's king of kings, not only king of the Jews. He's king of all humanity. So, it's, so this is what Christmas is all about: the birth of a child. This is none other than the Son of God. Last week, we were reminded his beginning, his origin doesn't start from human conception. You and I start from two persons falling in love and getting into a, a marriage situation. So we were born through uh, the sexual relationship of two human beings, but not so. Jesus, at the very beginning, was there. He was God. He is God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word is God. And, and this is how great Jesus is. And he's the beginning, right? He creates everything. Nothing that is created is not made by him. And he's going to be king, ruling for eternity. And uh, this is the good news being announced to Mary. And this is what Christmas is all about. And I think from Mary's reaction, uh, we can see that indeed this good news means something something very very significant in her life this good news changed her life for the better not necessarily materially but this good news means that you know her life will never be the same again and firstly we see that she plays her total trust in God for her life. Faith is not just taking on some belief or taking on some philosophy. It's not an exercise of the mind. For Mary, faith is a total trust in God for he knows what goes on. He knows what is best. And it's beyond a rational deduction. For her, right, unmarried, and yet she will be pregnant. And that's totally beyond rational thinking. And for her, faith is hanging on to God even though it may not sound good to her, right? As I mentioned earlier, the cost is tremendous, but yet she knows that even the bad time is good times for God, right? So it, sometimes we might fall into bad time. Even health may be taken away from us, but God will never leave us. Remember the message of the angel? God is with her. For her, that's enough. God is with me. That is enough to carry me through the good time as well as the bad times. God is with me. That is good enough when people look at me differently. Even the world rejected me. That's good enough because I'm with God. Or God is with me. And that's faith. And she has to learn this for the rest of her life. Because after the birth, you could imagine, she has to bring up the child to adulthood. And even on the cross, she experienced such pain seeing her only seeing her eldest son nailed on the cross, completely helpless and rejected by the world. But she trusts her life entirely in the hands of God. 
And secondly, I think her response really reminds us of what true servanthood is. Servanthood is not just doing God a favor. Sometimes we like to think we are serving God by, you know, uh, doing this and doing that. Well, we thank God that He has given us such privilege. But I think for Mary, servanthood is a total submission to God, even though it is costly to her. As I mentioned earlier on, the cost of rejection, the cost of living a life without a husband, the cost of bringing up a child on her own. But it is not too costly for Mary because she sees that I am a maid. I'm willing to serve God and obey Him, for He sees fit that it should be done in my life in this particular way. So I think this is what Christmas is all about. Christmas is a time for celebration, time to sing Christmas carols, time to spend time with the family, time to relax and enjoy. We thank God for this privilege and this opportunity given to us. But I think Christmas reminds us of the virgin birth, reminds us that there is nothing impossible in the hands of God. I don't know how life is treating you. I don't know if you are meeting problems or challenges in life that makes you think that, well, how can I possibly go through this on my own? How can I possibly overcome this problem? How can I possibly carry on? And I think this story, this narrative, this account reminded us that nothing is impossible for God. Now I've chosen different versions which means the same thing. For nothing will be impossible with God. That's the ESV version. The contemporary version makes it, I think, sharper. Nothing, it's just simply nothing. Nothing is impossible for God. He's God, right? So by definition, nothing is too hard for Him. And in Mark 10, I like it because that is the positive side of it. Jesus on that occasion reminded us that for us, right, our power is limited. But for all things are possible with God. Now I think this is what Christmas is all about. Some people find living, especially living under COVID, is stressful. Yes, it is stressful. My daughter said to me over the phone, living in the Netherlands is lonely. Working from home in a one bedroom unit is frustrating. Not able to meet up with people, not only cut off from friends and from the society is extremely, extremely depressing. But this story, Christmas reminds us that life can be different because God is with us. That this wonderful God is willing to show his favor, his salvation to anyone who cares to return to him. Trust your life, trust your future in the hand of God in the same way as Mary. Would you turn to God and said, I am God's servant. I am God's maid. May God's will 
May God's purpose be done on me. Do you do that? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that Christmas reminds us of the coming of the Lord, that through his coming, life can not be the same again, that the world sees the light, that the coming of the Son of God brings salvation. And Lord, we give you thanks that we who have come to you can experience the joy of Christmas in the most wonderful way. For we celebrate that Jesus, not only as the Son of God, but as our Saviour, as our Lord. So let, let Lord help us to be mindful of uh, our status, of our privilege. Help us, Lord, to live up, up to your expectation as your servant. May your will be done in our lives for your glory. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.